Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week 145 of Build Your Stash and Craft. This week, for the first time since I've started, I failed. I couldn't do this well. I can do this, but not to the extent that it should be done. I've had a request a few times for a scoreboard. Now we've already purchased a scoreboard in our Build Your Stash and Craft series and but if, you know, people hadn't started from the beginning and I have people that are coming in at different points in time, so they may not have one and they've asked, can you make a scoreboard? You can, but you can't make a scoreboard like the type that you buy. I've come to the conclusion they really have to be molded. Um, and so this is what I did. I went ahead and I got my products for the scoreboard. I used my rotary tool that we bought six months ago or so in, in our series. And I bought a, a plastic cutting board from the Dollar Tree. And I bought a metal ruler from the Dollar Tree. And I thought, I'm going to use this to make a scoreboard. So the first thing that I thought I was going to do was I, I marked the whole thing. I got my marks all the way down. Three marks to make sure your lines are straight. Always three marks to make sure that your lines are straight. Especially when doing something this picky. And I lined up my ruler, and I used one of the bits on my Dremel, and I cut my first one. Now, the first thing is it, it melts the plastic. So the plastic comes out along the edges and sticks. So then you've got to scrape that all off. And if this had worked, then I would have sanded it and sanded the groove. But the thing is, is it's not perfectly straight. It has little bits of, you know, jagginess to it. And it's sharp. And... The depth is different. You know, some places the tool went a little deeper than others. And it just really did not work. So I tried using an X-Acto knife, which I knew wouldn't work. Um, but I tried it, and it didn't work. But I also tried it to give myself a score line to run the blade down. That also didn't work. I tried using the sanding blade. That one worked the best, but still did not work. It still has different depths and it still has jaggy edges. And no matter what you use with the Dremel because it moves so fast and I only had it on a low speed, it melts the plastic and it makes it rough and it, you know, it makes it, you know, you're not going to want to put your paper on it. The other thing is with a scoreboard is scoreboards come in very small increments. They come in eighth of an inch increments. And as a matter of fact, this one I think even has a few sixteenths of an inch. Your scoreboards are so close together that you're never going to get this little tiny piece of what what they have here is plastic, which is one sixteenth of an inch by the actually it might yep, it's one sixteenth of an inch. It's really, really tiny. You're never going to use your Dremel to get anything that close. And even these are just half inch increments and even the half inches, they just didn't work. So making a good, nice, sturdy scoreboard for yourself, I do apologize, but I could not figure it out. And for the $20 it costs for a scoreboard, now when I bought mine online on Amazon the week that we bought them, this is all I could get. I got the small one. It's like a six and a half by six and a half or seven by seven. But they did have in metric, they had the 12 by 12s. And at other times they had had the 12 by 12s in inches. But the week that we bought it, they didn't. So I bought the smaller one, which worked fine, um, you know, because it's it was easier to store. But $20, you can get a scoreboard. For the trouble you're going to go to to get a half inch scoreboard, it's worth the $20. And you can, on $5 a week, you can buy a scoreboard. We did. Um, we bought cutting, we bought our rotary tool. We bought a cutting tool, which is another thing you're going to need to make your own scoreboard, is you are going to need a trimmer. Um, because you are going to have to have perfectly straight lines in order to make your own scoreboard. So, you can make a scoreboard out of cardboard if you are in desperate need and you don't have one um you can make one it's very very fiddly it is a lot of work i already have a score line here and here and and the way to do it is and this is half inch increments 
to go any smaller, I don't have the patience for it. You could do quarter inch if you want to. You could just, you know, eighth inch. I don't, that would be really hard to do and make sure that you keep your pieces of cardboard straight. So the way that you do this, I just cut this rectangle and I made sure that I used my rotary tool to cut it to make sure that it was perfectly square. Got to have perfectly square. Got to have very straight lines if you want to make a scoreboard. So my backing is perfectly square. I decided on half inch increments. So the very first strip of cardboard that I have on here, I have a flat piece of cardboard. And then so far I have three strips glued on top. The first one is a half an inch because it's a half an inch from the edge to the edge of that piece of cardboard. Then you have to have a gap. So in order to have that gap and have the next piece of cardboard only take you over a half an inch, you have to know how large that gap is. So this gap is 1 16th of an inch, which is the width of two pieces of cardboard glued together. So I glued together a strip that is a 16th of an inch wide. And when I cut my next strip, instead of cutting it one half of an inch, I cut it a sixteenth of an inch less than a half an inch because I have a half an inch, then I have a sixteenth of an inch, so I'm a sixteenth of an inch shy of having enough room to put another half inch piece in and make it line up correctly. Hope you get what I'm saying. So then what I did was I cut the rest of my strips. The very first one has to be the correct amount because you're just starting from the edge. And then you're going to decide the width of your of your gaps and that is how much shorter you will cut all the rest of the next strips so you get all the way to the end. You're going to glue yourself a template that is that thick. This is a sixteenth of an inch thick and so what I did was I glued this one down then I put glue on the next one. I held my spacer in there and then I glued that down made sure I pushed it up nice and straight along the edge and then I did the next one. So now I have two more strips, and I'll, so I'll just show you what I'm talking about, how you put them on there. We'll just probably just do one. And then you're going to need to make sure that you mark your scoreboard. And every time that you glue down a strip, check it. Make sure that you've got it right so that if you're going to use it, you know that your spacing is correct, that it's what you think it is. And so... I'm going to take my spacer and I'm going to push it right up against, I'm going to set that down for a second, push it right up against the one that's already there. And I know it's hard to see because it's all cardboard. I did the next one with the colored side up so you can see as I'm placing it. But I'm going to take that then and I'm going to push it right up against that spacer. It's a sixteenth of an inch less than a half an inch wide. So I've got this plus this equals exactly one half of an inch. Give that a press. Double check. Make sure I've got my spacing in there. Make sure that I've got it pushed right up tight. Make sure that this is up tight against the one before it. And make sure that the new one is pressed right up tight against that one, but make sure that you don't slide underneath of it. There is the line that we will be able to score in. And then before I would do anything else, you take your ruler, line it up on the edge, and make sure that you've got a half an inch, one inch, and one and a half inches. And that's two inches right there. And that is the very edge of this piece of cardboard right here. And then you would just continue. You would take your spacer, put it on here, and glue the next one on. And just continue until you get them all done. And then you would just want to make sure that you marked them so that you would know this is half inch, this is one inch, this is one and a half inches, and that's why I did them this way, 
because now when I go to write on this, it will be hard to see, but this is one half of an inch. This is one inch. This is one and a half inches. This is two inches. The next one will be two and a half inches. So that is how you can make your own scoreboard. You have to be really patient. You have to take your time because it doesn't do you any good to make it if you don't have it really, really steady, really solid, really straight. Get your spacings correct. Um, if your spacings start to get off, you need to make sure that you figure out why and make your adjustments. And so, so although you can make your own scoreboard, it's not going to be the best. The other thing is, is that when you buy a scoreboard, it comes with a bone folder. If you don't have a bone folder, you have to figure out something else to use to score your paper. Now, the one thing that I use to score is when a pen runs out of ink, because the roller ball works really nicely as a scorer, if you have a pen that has run out of ink, then you can keep that and use that to score your paper. It works really well. Um, the only problem is, is, especially with this type of pen, Every once in a while, they completely run out of ink. They will not work for anything. And then as soon as you go to score something, you get about halfway through, and all of a sudden, the ink starts coming out again. So you have to be really careful and make sure that it's really, really empty before you use it as a scoring tool. But you can use an empty ink pad as a scoring tool. Um, because otherwise, you know, I haven't found anything um, that works really well. I mean, I have, depending, like my husband gave me this thing that I use. But this is a little bit fat. To score inside the lines. I guess it fits in there. So this is just a plastic thing. Somebody says it goes on the end of a rope for threading or something like that. Um, so, but it was just something he had and said, do you want it? And I kept it. And that's what I do use it for is for a little scoring tool. So that's, well, let's score a piece of paper. Let's see. Do I have a piece of paper here? All right. I have a piece of card. So we're going to put this on here. Now the other thing, when you get it all the way done, you've got your numbers at the top, you're going to want to, and make sure that you get this straight. This is not something to eyeball. You are going to want to draw a line across the top so that you have a place to line up your paper and you can still see your marks, but mostly so that you have a place where you can line up. I'm going to come right here to the edge. Put a mark there at one centimeter. Put a mark here at one centimeter. And when you want to make sure that you have a straight line from your edge, so long as you know your edge is straight, if you make three marks, if you were to make one of those marks off a little bit, you accidentally went to one and a half instead of one, or you just accidentally looked at the wrong, or your, your ruler slid, if you have three marks, one of them is going to be off as you line them up. And so then you can go back and check which one's wrong. Where do you need? If you only have two and one is off, especially if it's not off by a lot, if you only have two marks, no matter what, they're going to line up. You got a mark here and you got a mark down here, they're going to line up. And if it's only off a little bit, you may not notice it, but then your paper's going to be crooked every time. So, so there we go. Now we have a straight line at the top. We have our measurements across the top. And so we'll just line our paper up with that line. And we'll just put our scoring tool. And I'm going to, because this is cardstock, I'm going to put my scoring tool right in that groove before I even get onto the paper. And I'm going to hopefully be able to emboss this. Whenever I emboss cardstock, I always kind of do like this. I find that if I just try and pull it across the cardstock, even on my regular scoreboard, I wind up going off kilter because cardstock is so thick. So I just always do that, and it just kind of seems to make you stay straight. And did we come out? Yes, we did. We came right out in our groove. So there we go. And we'll do one at, we'll score it at one inch. So if you absolutely cannot afford a scoreboard, and if you have time to do it, and you're going to be patient with it, you can make your own but you're not going to be able to make one with the grooves as small as an actual scoreboard but there we go and actually when you score whatever part is rounded up that's the part that's stretched that's the part that is supposed to go 
to the inside. And it doesn't, to me, it doesn't make sense, but that's the way that they say that you're supposed to fold them. So there we go. Our scoreboard did work nicely, um, but we're only going to get a half an inch. You probably could do a quarter, but doing a quarter and keeping your strips very, very straight and having the time to do it, um, you know, would be a lot more difficult. But there we go. There's our scoreboard with... We can at least do this. And the thing is, if you just want to score cards or something like that, or, you know, you just want to fold something, you're not looking for exact measurements, you know, but you want that score line in there because it's just easier to fold, you can just take a piece of cardboard and, you know, just put two strips on it with a gap between them. Make sure it's straight. And then you can just all day long, you can just take your piece of paper and set it there and score down that line and move it over and score down that line. So you don't specifically have to have one that has all these grooves in it. And, you know, and that works great for something where you're not looking to score every half an inch or, or every inch or something like that. You're just looking to score something in the middle and you can mark it. You know, let's say you're taking an eight and a half by 11, you mark it at four and a quarter at the top and the bottom, line it up with your score lines and, you know, and score. And just, you know, if you're doing a whole bunch of them, just, you know, be repetitive with it. So that is the best that I could do for a scoreboard. The one that I thought could be a real solid, good working scoreboard just really does not work, did not turn out well. And, you know, like, you know, Papa says you could use a saw. Well, we can't because we don't have a saw in our stash. And um, and even at that, the saw blade is wider. I'd have to buy a very small saw blade. It'd have to be a very thin saw blade to make your score lines. And even then, trying to get them close enough together um, so that you still had your groove, but you still had your raised part between it. I mean, these are so, so close that that would just be really hard to do. So... That is our scoreboard for today. And I call this one basically a fail because it, you know, it, it works, but it's not something that I think this is a great idea and everybody should make one of these. If you really need one, this is the way to do it. And, um, and if you, you know, save up until you can afford one, that's a really good idea. That is a, a scoreboard is a good purchase if you are constantly folding paper. It's a very good investment. So for next week, what we are going to need is we are going to need from the Dollar Tree a pack of construction paper. Construction paper is the kids colored coloring paper. It has a very newspapery, heavy newspaper kind of texture to it. I don't know what, how you want to describe it, but we call it here construction paper. And then also we are going to need a little bottle of Clorox Beach from the dollar store. So for next week, we're spending $2. Let's see, where are we on our list? Um, scoreboard. Okay, next week, 146. We are going to spend $2. We're going to save $3. We will have $86.50 in our bank. So thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.